Hey guys, John Lee Dumas here, founder and host of EO Fire, and you're listening to Bravepreneur Parents Academy with Balaji O. Welcome to Bravepreneur Parents Academy, where the world's most inspiring entrepreneurs reveal their most defining childhood moments and share their legacy for raising brave little heroes who will grow up to change the world. And now, he still reads comic books under the blanket at bedtime. Please welcome your host, best-selling author, award-winning speaker, and self-confessed geek dad, Balaji O. You know, like the hotel in Vegas? Yeah, no, that's really his name. Balaji Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Bravepreneur Parents Academy. I'm your host, Balaji O, and today we are speaking with the dynamic Miss Stacy Curtis. Now, Stacy wants to live in a world where everyone feels free to share their stories. Stacy is the creator of rightofyourlife.com and the Right of Your Life podcast. Stacy is all about life storytelling. She interviews fascinating people and captures their life story. But there's more. There's more to life storytelling, and this is really going to draw you in. So if you've been through any difficulties in your life, if you feel like you have a story to tell or your family has a story to tell, but it's never made it onto paper, you're going to want to tune in to Stacy Curtis. So without further ado, let's Get this show started. Stacy Curtis, welcome. Well, thank you. This is fabulous. I'm excited to be here. Oh, goodness. This is a real treat. I'm so excited about the work that you're doing. Let's dig right in. I want to get right out of the way and let the expert take the floor. <laughs> so, Stacy, first and foremost, what is life storytelling? What does that mean? Well, life storytelling is an umbrella term, and it really includes – Any type of expression of your life and sharing it with other people. So it can be a memoir. That's traditionally what people think of, but it's much, much more than that. It could be a poem. Um, A lot of people write about their life and then write a song. So it could be, you know, a songwriter. could be a personal essay, just a short little paragraph. could be journaling. Any way of getting that, getting your life experiences out into the world. Now, that's interesting, Stacey, and I've heard lots of statistics uh, relating to how many people are actually interested in one day writing a book. A lot of us would like to write a memoir, yes. but not all of us, Stacey, let's be honest, not all of us are born writers. What if what if I don't feel comfortable or the listener doesn't feel really accomplished as a writer? Oh, that's all right because – and that's actually what I teach at LifeStoryTelling.com. I teach people who are not writers how Mm. to share their stories. So you do Mm -hmm. not have to be a writer to benefit from life story writing. You don't even have to actually share your life story with anybody. You can write it Mm. just for yourself. And, in fact, life storytelling and life story writing increases your immune system. So it will benefit you whether or not you share it with anybody or whether or not you publish it into a book. You don't have to. You, You could, but you don't have to. But it's still beneficial. Okay, Stacy. I'm not letting you off the hook now because <laughs> you just made a big statement. Mm-hmm. You're telling me that writing about my life yes. strengthens my immune system, makes me healthier. Yes. Why? How does that happen? Well, there are actually studies done. Um, what happens is you're, you have stress in your life. You have, you know, everybody has troubles, um, whether they've had a bad day or they've had a bad week or a year or a decade. I mean, you could have had some really traumatic things happen to you. And reflecting back on those things by writing about them, um, boost your immune system. It actually um, lowers your stress level. It helps your cortisol level. It's it's benefit beneficial in many many ways, and and that's just one of them. I mean, it it helps you become a much wiser future self by writing about your past self. And so, who who wouldn't want to access that wisdom? Wow, I, I'm feeling like I'm going through a Back to the Future movie right now, <laughs> standing next to Marty right. McFly. But I kind of like that idea of my future self learning 
from my present self simply yes. by me writing about those struggles. Yes. It, it, it's a little bit counterintuitive, though, for me, Stacey, uh -huh. because, look, I had a traumatic uh, – some traumatic teenage years, mm -hmm. and by traumatic, I just mean – uh, when I went through my, my pimple phase right. and learning about right. girls. Oh, nothing really serious, but to me it was a big deal, Absolutely. people. <laughs> right. And you're, now you're telling me I need to go wade through all of that muck yes. and relive, go through the experience again, right. Stacey? Well, here's what you do when you go through that. You are a much wiser person now. You're much more mature, right? And so that experience cannot hurt you again. It can't re-hurt you. So when you go back and you write about it and write through your feelings, how did you feel? You're writing, you're writing it through um, a, a much more mature person from a much more mature, mature perspective. Yeah. Yet you still have, you, you know, in the back of your mind, you have those experiences that were created and thought about and the, the feelings in the back of your mind from a teenager's perspective, right? So what you do is you, to access that, you write through it, write, write all those feelings out. What did you see? What did you hear? What did you do? What did other people tell you? What, did, what was the uh, world telling you at that moment about yourself? And then what, what, what did you learn later? And that way you can release those. You don't have to, you know, your mind doesn't have to occupy that space anymore. And then you know you own your truth as it is today, right? I, I like how I talked about the trauma of uh, having acne or pimples mm -hmm. in my teen years. And Stacy took me completely seriously because <laughs> Stacy Stacy has two teenage I children do. right now. Yes. And so she yeah, she's reliving some of those teen the teen angst I can only imagine. Absolutely. I'm at that crossroads right now where, you know, I'm I'm trying to raise um, vivacious entrepreneurs, but yet mm. wanting to protect them from the whole world. And it's, so I find myself in a struggle, and I write about that as well. But, um, uh. you know, I know the feelings that I went through, and, and, you know, part of my story, which we'll get into it, is I never raised my hand. I want my girls to raise their hand. I want them to make mistakes. I want them to make all the mistakes they can, at, you know, at an early age, so when – they get to my age, they'll be much, much more wiser than I am. Wow. Wow. Okay, Stacy. So you're bringing up something here that, that hits a little close to home for a lot of parents. Look, the instinct for most of us parents, frankly, is to protect our kids. Right. Now, I know that sometimes we dads – with our sons in particular, we like to – my wife says I haze my son sometimes. He's not hazing. I'm trying to raise a man here. <laughs> so, you know, put a little hair on his Right. <laughs> so sometimes we, we, we like to have our kids feel in a controlled environment. But by and large, Stacey, we do want to protect our kids. Tell me a little bit more about this assertion that you actually want your kids to fail – and fail a lot uh -huh. while they're young. Well, I want them to fail well. So with, yeah. what happens when you fail a lot of times and, and you're not – and you have low self-esteem is yeah. that you don't have the ability to pick yourself up. Or you start telling yourself, nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. I guess I'll go eat worms. You know, it's, that's the song <laughs> I, I sing to my oh, kids. Right. Even today, they're like, oh, please, Mom. Oh, <laughs> so, um, But I want them to fail forward, and I want them to learn those lessons. Hey, it's okay. If failure is just another way it doesn't work, let's let's change it up. Let's see what else works. And um, I am constantly, you know, it's easy as a teen to just see, you know, one little moment in time as the entire universe. And yeah. so I keep teaching them, and it's over and over and over again, that it's not the end of the world. And uh, let's look at this in a big perspective, and that's just one little setback. What else can you do? And um, and I and I say, hey, that's great. I'm so glad you failed. And, and let me just give you an example. Different types of classes, and, and parents often say, okay, you've got to, you know, or let's do this class. You have um, – uh, you know, an interest in Taekwondo. Great. Let's put you in a Taekwondo class and let's get you to be a black belt or let's get you to, you know, whatever competitions, which is fine if you have a passion for that. But 
you know, I had a child who started and didn't like it. Uh, that's okay. And started something else and didn't like it. Started something else. I want them to start and fail a multiple at multiple things, like lots and lots of times. I want them to to explore the world through that. It's okay if they stop. They tried it. They they explored it. And then you know now you you know the other part is you you have you know some kids are lazy like mine have been sometimes and just didn't want to get up in the morning to practice, but. That's a whole different um, scenario, but I want them to experience so much more of the world than I did, and so it's okay if they start, they fail. That's okay. What else? What are we going to do tomorrow then? And so I'm constantly asking those questions and and urging them to see it from a different perspective and mature that way. Wow. Wow. Now, you talked about the importance of self-esteem in that failure. Mm -hmm. You you, you coined this phrase failing well mm -hmm. and, and distinguish between just failing and not get, picking yourself back up versus failing well. With you having two teenagers, Stacy, you've been through a lot of the phases from toddler to young kids to tweens, now teens. For those of us at that same phase or maybe with younger kids, how do we handle that self-esteem question? How do we give them the armor to be able to withstand bullying or negative peer pressure or negative attention from other kids. How have you done it? Right. Well, uh, it, it's tough, and it's a struggle for anybody. And I'll not say that I never struggled with it because I have, and I've struggled with it with my girls. But um, I don't just give them a trophy for everything they do. I um, – Help them understand that, you know what, you've got to put forth the effort. If you don't put forth the effort, then you don't get the prize. And yeah. so by by doing that, I'm teaching them how to fail well. And that's what I love is, is failing well. How do you um, pick yourself back up? Yep, that didn't work. Or And, and the same thing with um, bullying or negative peer pressure and, and um, things like that is – Okay, something didn't work. Let's see what else. You know, what is that bully's objective? Why are they doing that? And is there something that I can do to help them? You know, how, how can I help the world by helping this bully stop being a bully? And um, and so you and self esteem does play into that. And I help them take a look at. You know what? Not everybody's going to like you. Right. Not everybody likes me, right. you know, not everybody right. in my work, not everybody in my neighborhood. Some lots of people do, but there are, you know, some people you'll, you're never going to get away from it. So let's deal with it now. How do you deal with that in, in a constructive manner? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it brings to mind the power of, of practice. I imagine that if our kids don't have practice at failing or adversity, mm -hmm. then we can't really expect them to be good at handling it. Absolutely. So they actually have to they have to experience it, handle it poorly, hopefully get some coaching from mom or dad and iterate several times before I imagine they get better at it. Exactly. And you know what they were born with that. They were born with the ability cuz you know that's how any child walks is practice. They fall down, they get back up. <laughs> so and at some point they stop because we protect them so much and we say, okay, wow. this, you know, I want you to be perfect and this world is perfect and we're going to, you know, make this the best experience. You know what? Not every experience is the best experience and that's okay, but you've experienced it and you can look back and, and this is, you know, I always say this to my kids too. What will your future self say if you quit this or what will your future self say Ooh. if you don't, um, if you let this get you down? You know, and so always take it back to that big picture and that perspective. Um, I I would tell my my teenage self to um, you know do much better in school because I didn't I didn't I didn't work that hard because I didn't feel like I wanted to. Um, so there are a lot of things, and you don't want your you know future self to have regret. So your future self will thank you by putting forth this effort, and um, so we we talk about that as well. Wow. Very cool stuff. Stacy. I want to get back to the writing a little bit. Yes. We took a little bit of a tangent, but I want to get back to that. Could you talk to me maybe personally about how you got into this practice of writing through difficult situations, writing through oh. adversity? How did you discover that? Absolutely. Well, I um, – 
I had a tendency, and I didn't realize it until, of, of not raising my hand. And um, mm. I was going through a very, very difficult divorce. And it was, you know, one of those, you know, lifetime movie type of divorces. And wow. it was very, very difficult. And my kids were younger. And I, at one point, my mom gave me birthday money and I had been hearing, you know, telling people different, you know, stories and they're like, man, that's crazy. Are you kidding me? You should write about that. And so I took that birthday money and I enrolled in a memoir course and and I loved it. I discovered my life theme, which was not raising my hand. And I I realized, you know, I I consider myself a, a strong career woman. I've got through difficulties and I was powerful and I was, you know, able to, but you know what, when I looked back, it really was, I just didn't raise my hand when I, when I was in kindergarten, when I was in grade school, high school, I was the wallflower. I was the, and I just didn't say, Hey, that's not right. And so finally in my late forties, I, I, you know, finally raised my hand and said, you know what? That's not right. I'm not going to stand for that anymore. And when I took this memoir class, I was able to see what my past life theme was, and I was able to change it. Mm. I started raising my hand. I started saying, that's not right. I started um, sticking up for myself. And because of that, I changed my life tremendously. I mean, I am in so much better, and my kids are in so much better environment for me sticking up for myself. Wow. And, and it's it's incredibly powerful. And, you know, when I was before this writing in this memoir class, you know, I like I said, I thought, you know, I was a businesswoman and I made things happen. And and, and um, but as people, we have an incredible capacity for pulling the wool over our own eyes. And that's what I was doing. And that's what a lot of people who are listening to this podcast are doing. They don't realize what their true life theme is. But yet, if they could, wow, how powerful would that be? They could change it. Or if it's a good one, then they could enhance it. Enhance right, it. Right, right. So the the, um, the memoir class, they love my stories so much, they couldn't get enough of them. They're like, keep giving. You know, what, what's more? What's another story? <laughs> what happened to you this week? <laughs> Wow. So they gave me a scholarship to go back the next semester, and Look I continued that. writing, and it was just incredibly cathartic. I did go back and write through some of those difficult times. Um, I wrote through what was happening that week, and there's a way you can write even just a trip out to the mailbox into a fascinating story, and I that's what I teach. <laughs> and so I, I and, you, and it looks it sounds like a novel. And you can you can do that. And so that's what I was doing. And I fell in love with it. I, um, you know, took some more classes. And now I teach that at the local community college. And then I also, you know, put it online at lifestorytelling.com. And I teach people who are not writers how to write about their life. That's very important, Stacey, the, the part about not being writers, because you're talking about spinning a grand tale mm-hmm. about my walk to the, yes, the mailbox. Yes, you can. <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> if you just pull that off. I can teach you how. <laughs> that is pretty darn cool. Yeah. It's like a superpower. Yeah. Everybody like has a fascinating story. I don't care how dull you think your life is or, you know, it's traditional or whatever. Or it's not traditional. You have a fascinating story to tell. And here's what I always um, – talk to people about there's somebody who has gone through or just or getting ready to go through or in the process of going through something that you did right and how how much better would their life be with the wisdom that you have and you so you have a story to share you have a story to tell and um you should tell it you heard it here folks you need to get (laughs) that story out Man, this is powerful and very exciting. Okay, so Stacy, you are obviously a superwoman. We want to know though where superwoman came from. <laughs> and, and we can see we can tell part of it is this memoir course. But with your permission, we'd like to put you through the lightning round. Are you ready for the lightning I'm round? I'm ready for the lightning round. All right. She's ready. <laughs> Strap your seats and let's go. Okay, first and foremost, your favorite superhero growing up. My favorite superhero was probably Wonder Woman. I loved Wonder how she Woman. spun around and, and had the lightning. Yeah, it was cool. I loved Wonder Woman. I might not surprise you. <laughs> favorite 
cartoon growing up? Oh, favorite cartoon? Um, maybe Underdog. I, I don't know if you remember Underdog. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah. I do. And actually, if you look back with cultural literacy, you can see the uh, political <laughs> undertones of Is that Underdog. Right? Yeah, it's really interesting if you ever go back and look. That's fascinating. I'm going to go look it up on YouTube after this. Yeah, you, you, can go, you can find undertones in SpongeBob. I mean, you can find undertones in any cartoon. It's really interesting. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Okay, favorite family tradition growing up? Oh, my favorite family tradition was, is still, um, my parents make the uh, your favorite birthday dinner. And my dad, have a, can I tell a little tale right here? Sure. Please, please okay. do. When I was a young adult, and my mom, you know, called me up and said, okay, what do you want? I was out of the house. What do you want for your birthday dinner? And yada, yada, yada. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? I have a hankering for barbecued hamburgers out on the grill. Well, my birthday's in February, and in Kansas, it's snowing <laughs> in February. And then so I go over to my mom and dad's house, and yeah. what do I see? My dad out in two feet of snow with the barbecue Stop. grill. Grilled up. I had grilled hamburgers, yes. Wow. I got to applaud that's you. That, that, that's That's amazing. Yes. I love that. Yeah. All right. We got to borrow that. I'm stealing that from, from your <laughs> Stacy, what motivated you as a child? Oh, that's hard. I, I kind of look back sometimes and I think, well, I, was I even motivated at all? <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually, I think that's part of not raising my hand. I was motivated by not um, making waves, by oh, pleasing wow. everybody, and which is, was detrimental to me later on in life. So I was a people pleaser and motivated by not making waves. So making myself as as small and unobtrusive small. as possible. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I know a lot of people can identify mm-hmm. with that. Yeah, a, a lot of people can. A- and probably continuing in that theme, do you recall, Stacy, maybe one of those really embarrassing moments as a child or as a teenager that that stuck with you? Well, let me think. Uh, most embarrassing moment. Um, probably my most embarrassing moment was um, getting caught for stealing bee stickers. I really <laughs> loved these stickers. What my horror. teacher had. They were little buzzy bees, and I thought those were cute, and I just took them, but I got caught. <laughs> I was humiliated. I mean, I'm just kidding. First of all, then I couldn't believe I did it. You know, I'm like, what did I just do? And then I got caught, which made it worse. I, I hope they were really nice. Stickers. They were cute. <laughs> it's very important. <laughs> so one more question for you, Stacey, about your childhood. Looking back, how did your childhood lead to where you are today? Well, my childhood led to me led me to where I am today because I understand much better where some people are coming from. Mm. And and so I I'm I acknowledge that. I'm okay with I understand that not everybody is, you know, flamboyant and outgoing cuz yeah. I was yeah. not. I mean, I'm much more so now. I'm still an introvert, but I'm much more so outgoing than I was. Um, Mm. And so I – but everybody has worth. Everybody has value. Mm. So I try to draw that and and help them see their own value, whether they're, you know, a child or a teenager or a young adult or, you know, a peer. I always try to to look for that in them and and teach them what their values are because – their value is because not everybody recognizes it. Wow, very true. Very true indeed. Okay, so Stacy, a couple more questions, sure. and then we've got to get you out of here. Okay. What would you say overall is your number one job as mom? Ooh, my number – I have so many jobs as mom. <laughs> <laughs> and not chauffeur, right. driving the kids right. from activity to activity. Right. Um, my, my number one job, I think, is to teach my kids to be explorers of the world. And the more they explore the world, the more they're going to find their particular niche that really resonates with them, the more comfortable they're going to be with all different kinds of people and experiences. And I'm always telling my my girls, you know, open up your window of happiness. So if you have – and I'll give you this short example. Um, 
Sometimes my girls like the temperature only between 72 and 74 degrees. <laughs> like, okay, listen, girls, if your window of happiness is between 72 and 74 degrees, if it's 75 and up or 72 and below, you're not going to be happy. Why not open up your window of happiness to between 70 and 80 degrees or even higher? Uh, so you can be happy. You, you have that choice. You can be wow. happier in a lot more different experiences right. and right. ways if you open up and you have control of that. Your window of happiness is up to you. If you're not happy except for between 72 and 74, you're going to be unhappy a lot of the time. Of the and time. that's up to you. So I teach them to open up their window of happiness and, and to do that by being an explorer of the world. An explorer. And that's why I take them. Um, to all different kinds of things, whether they, you know, sometimes I have to drag them to the museum or drag them to, that's okay. I know I'm giving them an experience, and perhaps that's something they can hang their hat on later in life. You're a really good mom, Stacy. Thank you. If you don't hear that enough, they'll tell you one I'll day. I'll take might that any day. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Okay, Stacey, one more question for sure. you. Sure. Okay. This is sort of a time capsule question. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's pretend, Stacey, it's maybe 30 years from now. Okay. And your two beautiful daughters are married. They've got little kids of their own running around. What would you say, what would you like to say to your kids on this recording? For them to listen to 30 years from now. You probably have some practice, Whoa. by the way, Stacey, answering <laughs> Because <laughs> you try, you time travel on the regular with right. your future stories. self and but past self, right? That's right. So we have your two daughters thirty years into the future. Mm -hmm. They're looking back at 2015. What would you like to say to them about the choices you made, the decisions you made, why you dragged them to the museums, why you told them to enjoy the temperature when it's not just between <laughs> 70 and 74 degrees? Talk to your kids right now. What would you say to them, oh. Stacey? Girls, I am so proud of you for getting through your childhood, your teenage years, your young adulthood. I I love you. And guess what? My job in life was not to be your best friend. My job in life was to give you the best shot of happiness and success later on in life. And so that's what I've done. That's why we went to all those things every weekend and, and all kinds of activities that's why I um, dragged you to the museum, and that's why I told you to be an explorer of the world, and that's why um, I helped you to be explorers of the world. And I hope you to continue. I hope to. I hope that you continue to be explorers of the world and to teach other people to do the same. Stacy Curtis, right of your life podcast. That's rightofyourlife.com, W-R-I-T-E. She's also at lifestorytelling.com. I'm completely fascinated with Stacy's area of expertise, and she is making a difference in a lot of people's lives. Go check her out. Stacy says she can make you fascinating, even if you're just walking to the mailbox. That's right. Personally, <laughs> I want to see her do that. Please go to lifestorytelling.com. This will be time well spent. Stacy Curtis, thank you. Balaji, thank you so much for all that you're doing. I appreciate you and, and the things that you're doing to get your stuff out in the world. And, and um, good luck with that. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to go out and grill some barbecue hamburgers. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this is Balaji O with the Bravepreneur Parents Academy. We've been listening to Stacy Curtis, writeofyourlife.com and lifestorytelling.com. Completely fascinating conversation. Until tomorrow, friends, up, up, and away! <laughs> Fear not. Although this chapter of Bravepreneur Parents Academy has come to its conclusion, we have many more adventures for you and your brave little heroes. Head over to BraveQuest.me for access to the BraveQuest Journal, an interactive activity playbook that rewards your little ones with points for accomplishing tasks that build character and unleash your child's inner superhero all before bedtime. We look forward to having you join us for more adventures next time on Bravepreneur Parents Academy.